what a day, what a day. I could say that what a day, what an injection of, of, of IoT, what an injection of, of uh, uh, the Sigfox te technology and so forth and so forth. I mean, this is a great privilege for all of us to share and to see what's uh, on the market, what's happening right now, what's happening in the future. Uh, we are running uh, heavily over time, so I will be extremely short, and I will promise I will talk to you around eight to ten minutes in total. So, so, and I think that this is the last presentation, so we'll respect with that. Uh, I'm coming from Helsinki. Uh, my hometown is, is Helsinki, Finland. We have, uh, uh, I mean, today Connected Finland has been working as a uh, Sigfox network operator for more than three years. We are operating in two different countries. We are operating in, in, in Finland and in Estonia. And uh, surprise, surprise, we are as well developing our own sensors, a few of them. We have uh, uh, approximately 10 sensors that we have been developing so far. And surprise, surprise, we have developed our own software platform as well, only dedicated for Sigfox devices. So we can say we are a full stack uh, IoT house concentrating uh, on our activities only on, on, on Sigfox. We have been lucky uh, with our export activities. Uh, we have been uh, deliver delivering our products and our service platforms already to more than 20 countries worldwide. So all the way to US, South Africa, to Asia, Australia, just a few to, to mention. Sorry, wrong direction, like this. We really make things come alive, and uh, I love to always to say that Herb Kelleher, he was the CEO of Southwest Airlines, I mean, in the, in the past, and he said that we don't have a strategy in place. Our strategy is, 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 is saying, is called that we are doing things, and doing things, we are as well doing things, and, and, and IoT is, is really Internet of Things, and, and we really concentrate on that, that we will give the small devices, the sensors, the possibility to tell their story into, uh, or to us or into internet and so that we can really read and measure different kind of, of, of things. It can be on the computer, it can be on, the, on your tablet, it can be uh, in your application, uh, what we are using. Everything can be connected. If we remember Emma Park's words today, we are working in, the, in a disruptive market which means that we are shaking the prices, we are shaking all the prices what comes to to, to hardware cost, to connectivity cost, and as well simplicity and battery life added to that. So, so this is a significant, magnificent technology we are, we are talking about. In our opinion, uh, if we look on the, on the trends where we are living today, I remember in the past, during my years uh, working for the Swedish company Ericsson, we were talking about, wow, 3G is coming soon. We were already some enthusiastic people were talking about 4G, 5G is here today. Uh, I could, with one word to say, I, I would like to say that we are not competing with 5G or we are not competing with NBIoT, basically. We are complementing these services. We have clients, I mean, uh, from the operator market that are selling, they are distributing our solutions, for example, in, in Kusrim City, in Tallinn, in Estonia. So, so Telia is one of our partners who's, who's supporting and, and selling selling uh, our devices and services. Uh, zero G, it's really nice to talk about zero G because, I mean, it's a question of so small messages that you really don't, or we don't all understand what it's all about. In our opinion, it's so small messages that basically we say that we don't need to have 5G or we don't need to have NBIoT for those small messages. Of course, uh, Sigfox technology or our technology is not suitable for everything. So it can be, I mean, but it's, it's, it's good to see that, or we could say that, for example, smart buildings. We are concentrated very much in our sensors into smart buildings. So smart buildings doesn't really need 5G at all. And if we look on the map, for example, if we have smart buildings, so to measure, for example, humidity, it's a question of one byte. Or to measure temperature, temperature. So it's only two bytes. Or location, so that's okay, already 50% of the total payload of, of, of 12 bytes. But, but with this picture, we really mean that you don't need 
5G to measure smart buildings at all. Sigfox is a perfect, uh, perfect uh, communication method for that. Uh, today we have two approaches for transmitting tiny data of, of, of 2 to 10 bytes or 2 to 12 bytes, for example. And uh, I could say that by the experience that I have had and, and we have had is that if you're looking on the right hand side over here, so we can say that in our cases, we have not had a single, this kind of tradi traditional IT approach at all in implementing our systems. They have been extremely easy, they have been extremely fast. Uh, we are talking about quick implementations. Our customers' orders, the devices today, they will get them tomorrow. Tomorrow everything is implemented, the statistics and, and education to this wonderful system is done. Uh, a couple of examples. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of, of, of what we have been doing, but as well, in my opinion, we have not been talking about green values so much today. And just a reminder, so the data centers represents today already 3 to 5 percent of the whole electricity consumption in this globe, and it's increasing rapidly. So that's a good thing as well to remember that the power consumption in, in our devices, low power wide area network, it's a fantastic solution even if we think about green values. If we go to if we go, for example, to smart buildings and, and when we start to monitoring heating and cooling, for example. So today, a Finnish company called Lean Heat guarantees that they will drop 15 to 20 percent of the entire heating costs and energy consumption. We have some companies in, in, in my country, in Finland, saying that they will offer the equipment free of charge. It doesn't cost anything. But they want to have a cut, a provision of the savings they are doing. So they are so self-confident in doing this that they know that such a savings will be uh, really achieved. Office occupation today as a second example, for example, so huge corporates with a lot of employees, big offices. Today's trend is that we don't have our own chairs, for example, our own workstations. Uh, today, with the proximity infrared sensors, with the PIR sensors, it's extremely uh, uh, easy, for example, for Rapal, our customer, to inform to the employees about the free seats and as well to put some statistics about the occupancy rates to the management of the company. And this means that, that you can easily, with extremely low uh, costs, you can really measure how efficient, cost efficient the usage of the office is. You can have a heat map as well. You can see the locations, locations where, where, where which seats are occupied and so forth. Uh, today, uh, in my country, again in my country, so as an example, so there's a huge debate, there's a huge discussion about schools, kindergartens, about the indoor quality in those places. And today we have a bill, we have an invoice of approximately 1.5 billion euros in costs uh, due to the fact that the schools has poor ventilation or there's a huge ventilation malfunctions uh, today. The air quality is really bad. And uh, for example, by having a pressure, air pressure difference sensor in the schools, in the kindergartens, you can easy, m easily monitor how healthy the air basically is. Is the air pressure okay? Is it good enough compared with the air pressure outside? It's measured in the difference. 
as well it's measuring if the ventilation machines are working or not. Today's current situation, I would say, uh, or the past situation is that the schools has moved into barracks. And today's solution, not the future so solution, but today's solution is basically the air pressure sensors that can be easily installed in the schools as well in order to monitor that everything is going well regarding the ventilations. As a quick wrap up, we could say that today the technology less is more. We have really, we really need to update I, 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 IoT sensor software. Is it needed or not? In our case, it's not needed. And basically, I would like to say the focus sh should be on the essential things, the green values as well. And I could say that every each byte counts today. So the most suitable solutions should be offered to the right purposes and not to overkill, shall we say, uh, from a technology point of view, 5G to, to areas where, where it's not needed. You can do it for a much lower price, the implementations with even better results. That's all for now. Thank you very much.